Psychologist and voluntary hero Jordan Peterson released his book 12 Rules for Life. It became an instant bestseller, a guideline filled with stories about how to confront the chaos in life, overcoming tragedy and malevolence. Especially young men are drawn to his message of what he calls hope. In the face of polarization and identity politics, Peterson explains how we should cherish peace as the exception and be responsible human beings. You also say in the book, you, you can't talk about everything. You have to be precise in the problem that you're mm -hmm. trying to address in the world. So I was struggling a little bit with that. So like, how can I, what should I tell my friends, for example, when uh, I, I try to tell them about the rules? So what is, what is how can I com compromise, like the, well, the or size it down? Because it's so, it's so much. It's, well, I'm trying, first of all, to outline the landscape in which people live. Mm -hmm. And I think the landscape we live in is best conceptualized in the way that fiction conceptualizes it. We live in a world of chaos and order. Mm -hmm. So that would be one division. And another division, would, it would be that we live in a world of good and evil. Okay. And it's the world of chaos and order. Might, you might say the consequence of that is that our lives are tragic, right? They're short. We're, we're bounded, our lives are short and, and tragic. And that's a big problem. It's the big problem. It would be the big problem if there wasn't another big problem, and that's the problem of malevolence. Mm -hmm. And so we live in a world, being is tragic and it has a malevolent aspect. Okay, so that's the problem. Mm -hmm. And then all that's other the problems point. are, the yeah, it's the bottom. Point. It's yeah. the bottom. That's, that's the problem. That's they, well, all other problems are manifestations of those problems. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, yeah. and then you may say, well, is there a way of solving that base problem? And that, mm -hmm. that's what religious stories are attempting to do. They're saying, well, we live in a world that's bounded and finite and tainted by malevolence. How do you conduct yourselves, yourself in such a place? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what the book is about yeah. at the deepest level. And, yeah. well, one is, is that the best antidote to malevolence happens to be truth, mm -hmm. but that also happens to be the best antidote to tragedy. Mm -hmm. So, and then the question is, well, whether or not that actually constitutes a real antidote. I, when, I, when I talk to friends or family and I tell them, well, if we don't stop behaving this way, if we don't stop lying, if we don't become more truthful about what's happening, then this could end in, in, in genocide. Mm -hmm. And, and they, they just look like, what are you talking about? This? Yeah, well, it always does. I mean, so it's, it, that's too, that's it's not even it's a too shock. Much. Yeah, I know, yeah, it shouldn't even be a shock because no. it's the natural state of affairs. That always happens. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we also yeah. think that there was something that was in some sense limited to, well, let's say what happened in Germany in the 20th century, but it's not limited to that at all. It happens everywhere. Berlin, where I live, it's full of monuments, from the Holocaust yeah. monuments, full of yeah. museums with, with all... I know, every never, street forget. Corner, never, never forget. Never forget, but still, it's, it's, it's not something that we have internalized somehow, that, no, that, you this, can't is real, that this is you real. You can't remember what you don't understand, mm. right? No matter how hard you try. Yeah. And the issue is, There's what does it mean to remember? But what I know what it means to remember, like technically, if you make a mistake and you've represented it properly in your memory, mm -hmm. you don't make the same mistake again. That's actually what memory is for, right? Because mm -hmm. you think, well, why do you remember the past? Mm -hmm. Well, there's two reasons. One is to repeat things you did well mm -hmm. that worked out and to not repeat things you did badly. The purpose of memory is to do that. It's not to represent the world. No. I mean, it is, but it, only in so far as... To do what works, basically. And to not do what doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. It's to bring the successes into the future and leave the failures behind. Okay. Right? You say, well, <coughs> we're going to remember the Holocaust. Okay, so well, what are you going to remember? So humans cannot have, like, a collective memory that they use to, like, a warning signal. Oh, sure, we do that too, but we have to formulate it properly, you know, so... So one question, well, a question, and this question has plagued me forever, I would say, is, well, what is it that we're supposed to have learned from what happened in Germany in the 1930s? Mm. What did we learn that there was something wrong with Germans? Is that the lesson? That's not really a very useful lesson. Mm. Um, that, that that was isolated to that time and place, that, that it was the consequence of following pathological leadership, that it was... a consequence of economic turmoil. I mean, there's all sorts of 
things you could learn from it. Mm -hmm. My sense is that what needs to be learned of, from it is that that's what we're like. Mm -hmm. So it's, right. not, it's not culture, it's not a country, it's not the German, the Dutch. It's Chimpanzees do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the great discovery of Jane Goodall, right? She found that the chimps raided You know, and and when they, juveniles in particular, and when they, when they're out on the borders of their territory doing their patrols, yeah. and they came across chimps from another troop, they tear them to pieces. It's like, well, okay, that's not human. That's yeah. it's, this is deeper than it's even deeper than human. This wasn't she also reluctant to bring yes, that, absolutely to bring that. To bring that Yeah, she was shocked. She was shocked. Well, yeah. for a bunch of reasons. I mean, first of all, she was properly cautious because she thought that human interactions with the chimpanzees might have interfered with their natural behavior. And that was such a shocking finding. She was unwilling to publish it. Yeah. But I also think it violated her noble savage assumption, you know, that the state of nature was basically good. Mm -hmm. And I mean, lots of people think the reason that human beings are corrupt because they're socialized to be corrupt. You know, that, that the reason we're warlike, for example, is because we're socialized improperly. And I mean, you can certainly socialize people to be more or less warlike. But this is a way deeper problem than mm -hmm. mere socialization. Mm -hmm. You know, even though socialization is very, very important. So she, yeah, she was very hesitant to publish it. Mm -hmm. But she did, and it's been, it's become clear in the, in the decades following that that was normative behavior for chimpanzees. Mm -hmm. So, but it's also partly the fact that people have, we have ourselves backwards. We always ask stupid questions like, why are we anxious? Now, that's a stupid question. Mm -hmm. The question, the real question is, how is it ever that anyone is ever calm, even for a microsecond? Right, and it's the case. So, and so why are we aggressive? It's like, no, how is it that we can now and then be peaceful? Mm -hmm. That's the question. So we, we have these things backwards so often. So, so you're saying we, we don't understand ourselves and we, we can't remember what we don't understand? Yeah, you can't remember what you don't understand. It's a, a, it's, a, it's a, in some sense, to try to remember what you don't understand is to be in a state of trauma. And I would say that that would characterize the, the Germans. What is your impression of the Dutchmen? What, 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 what did they tell you yesterday? Oh, they tell me the same thing wherever yeah. I go. It's the yeah, same thing the all same. the time. I've been watching your videos for, you know, a year, a year and a half, whatever. Sometimes they say, well, I came because of the political, you know, controversy, but then I started listening to what you were saying, and then I got hooked on it, yeah. and I've been listening to, like, a hundred hours, and it's completely straightened out my life. They just say that over yeah. and over and yeah. over. Yeah, well, one one guy, British guy, he told me the strangest story. He came up, he had a heavy metal T-shirt on, and so I asked him about it, and okay. he said he was a fan of this band that makes songs out of stories, you know, takes takes fiction, works of fiction and turns them into songs, and that he's been reading a fair bit as a consequence of that. But he said that he was in a really dark place, and uh, he he had watched a clip that someone had made from one of my videos. Mm -hmm. I, don't re I don't remember what the clip was, but it was only a few minutes long. Mm -hmm. And he said it just helped him, it just fixed him right up. Yeah. And then he said he had a friend who was in the same boat, you know, feeling the same way. So he sent him the clip, and it had exactly the same effect on him. I, it's hope, eh? It's well, hope. the thing is, people yeah. have to know the archetypal stories, and the only we know half the archetypal story in in, mod, in the modern world. We know the life is short and tragic, and people are malevolent archetypal story. Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus, that's a rough one, man. Yeah, so If you don't know the counterposition to that then you have nowhere to go. No. And it's even worse if, and the counterposition is the, is the story of the voluntary hero. Mm -hmm. That's the counterposition. Mm -hmm. And if worse, if the story of the voluntary hero, you know, the person who will confront the corrupt society and confront chaos and the unknown, if that's also become contaminated with the idea of malevolence, like your heroic action is actually adding to the catastrophe of the world, well, then you're just done. What are you going to do? There's nowhere to go. Your best instincts are, are thwarted. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, partly what I've been suggesting to young men is that their best instincts are actually good, including the ones that have been damned, you know, aggressiveness, competition, all that sort of thing. It's mm -hmm. like 
that's good, so not the bad. The instinct to be responsible and to make make a life and have a family. Yeah, well, that's sort of a meta instinct in some okay. sense. That yeah. like the the instincts, the ones that you don't need to learn, are, are maybe the aggression, mm -hmm. the tendency to aggression, and you know the tendency towards sexual attraction, and all those things are so basic. But the instinct to be responsible is slightly higher in the in the. Okay cognitive hierarchy and it has to be catalyzed yeah. it has to be catalyzed by initiation it has to be catalyzed by stories okay. stories in particular you know say well how how do you how do you cope with this landscape it's like stand the hell up and get on with it and you know but so, deeper it's not just an injunction to, to behave properly the, but it is also something that the group has to um, give you permission for somehow if if people tell you that you should be responsible and that you can handle it that, well, that, someone, that works as a... Well, someone... Yeah, well, that, that's a good you observation. Need to, you, need you need to hear it. it. You need to hear it. Yes, you need to hear it. Yeah. That's the thing. You need, you need to hear it at least know. once. Yeah, yeah. From your teacher, from, from your From someone that you... That you, yeah, you can that do you this. respect. Yeah. yeah, and the yeah. thing is, as long as you're vaguely healthy, mm -hmm. if you hear it once, yeah. credibly, yeah, then that's enough. I remember enough. from my school time, I, there, there was this one teacher there, there was one teacher five years later, and I, yeah. I just moved from these moments of inspiration right. and, and people that would see something in me which I could move forward yeah with. right exactly um, so yeah those are mentors how you build, yeah and build they forward. encourage you yeah how can I get women to engage and to listen to Jordan Peterson I think I think there are many women who are you know there aren't as many the proportion isn't as high it probably doesn't matter I think there's there's enough and, no. and yeah I think so I think so and and the fact that men are listening more, first of all, perhaps is only temporary, but I think it's, I don't, I don't think it matters. But, and maybe women are doing whatever they need to do. It's possible. Maybe they aren't, maybe it isn't as necessary for them for some reason. Mm. Um, but they have this stress all the time, working, uh, being a women. parent. Yeah, women. Oh, yeah, could yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, they might be but, but they're they're preoccupied. Speak, but they're not speaking their mind yet about it it's very close it's very like a taboo you know you have to be all the, all these things and when women are together they tend to reaffirm that all the time oh, i'm this i'm working really hard and i'm picking up the kids and i'm trying to make it all work but they never say why are we doing this right why are we doing why are we doing they they judge each other if if they just if they just have the kids and don't work, they yeah. judge you if you work and don't have kids. See, women so. in my clinical practice tell me that all the time. Yeah. That's probably why they come talk to me. Yeah. And it's not a biased sample. I mean, so these are do, women it's who not are in very. The open. It's not, no. Some, not something well, they come and say, it isn't obvious to me that I can do all of this. Like I've seen no. some women in my practice who are unbelievably competent, you know, and so they're juggling a high-powered career. So that's like seventy hours a week, you know, or eighty hours a week flat out work and you know they're off to the gym and they're taking care of their kids and but they have they don't have a second to spare no. and and it isn't obvious that it's maintainable you know that high level of that high level of multi-dimensional um, attainment and it's not also obvious because of that that it's desirable no. but yeah so I think that we're in a you know we're in a period where the cultural ideal for women is career and family. Mm -hmm. You know, career is hard enough, family is hard enough. The intersection yeah. between the two is very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And doubts around that, yeah, are to be expressed privately. You can't yes. have a public conversation about it. No. You can't say, no. there was a recent paper published, um, I tweeted it the other day, showing that, I hope I get this right, that women who are with their children. Women who have children who are with their children full time are happier. And that's particularly the case if they gave up a good career to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's exactly the opposite of what everyone would like to believe. Yes. You know, and so, but it, and it's also, yeah, so it might be in some sense that the women, the problems that women have are unspeakable. That might be it. Can, can, is it possible to get the left to understand what th that what they're doing is actually against their own interests at this point? I'm not talking about people that are genuinely liberal and, and, and want to do uh, the right thing. I'm not thing. sure it is against their own interests. It depends on what their interests are. Yeah. 
Like if their interests are mayhem, then... Well, opening the borders and letting the migrants in and thinking and, and... the, uh, yeah, just rejecting the whole idea of, of borders and na- nationality and culture and tradition and um, uh, resisting the idea of marriage and having a meaningful life because you want to be, yeah, you have this fantasy left idea of, of that we all have to be radically equal and mm-hmm. um, which 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 is the way to to mayhem. Mm-hmm. You have explained uh, any not tomorrow, but uh, that's that's the. The path you're you're taking, so how so that's what I mean by by the left that that, that is doing this that is not in their own interests I think because it's they're, not in they're, the they're, interests they're of what like, you'd expect someone to want if they wanted something good if they wanted to have a country where they were safe and live with people together like we have a beautiful country here I mean, mm-hmm. but, but obviously this is not something they want to put uh, first. For themselves, they want to focus on an idea. Well, mostly, mostly, what resentment wants is to tear down. I read, yeah. had a friend who, years ago, who read all sorts of strange things. He was a an odd guy. He he was kind of an amateur anthropologist, and he read this book once. It was a Meditations on Resentment. That's not the name of the book, but that's basically what it was. And the guy who wrote it said that he had fantasized about hanging himself in the right position so that his swaying body would blot out his neighbor's sunlight. Oh. Yeah, well, that's resentment, you know. That's resentment. And and it, it, it really is bottomless. And They want to be mean after they die. That's basically... They, they yeah. want to extend their... Malevolence th- past the point of death. death. Yeah, right. Well, that's the, what the Columbine kids did. Yeah. Absolutely. That's a very good way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what lives on it's after not in, them. It's not enough to make the environment during your life... No, no, that's not enough. for others, it has to mm, extend. Right. Yeah. That's right. You got it. That's exactly yeah. right. And you think, well, why can people get that resentful? It's like, well, life is tragic and it's touched with malevolence. Did that's he, enough. Did Hitler think that way? You think that he well, there was, that he kept going on the, the last days and weeks of the war? He was in the, bunk, in the yeah. shelter and... He just let his men die. Oh, sure. He thought, oh, what? We, the, the historical record's quite clear. Right. Hitler felt that he had been let down by the German people, and it was fine that everything yeah. burned. Yeah. And, you know, you might say, if you were skeptical enough, that the burning was the point, was you the see. Point. Yeah. You see, and I believe that. Like, mm. And, I mean, things are multi-leveled, right? Mm. But the question is, well, what was animating Hitler, let's say? Well, you might say, well, it was Hitler himself. It's like, no, there was a dread spirit animating Hitler. And what was it after? Mm. Well, it was after Hitler's suicide in a bunker in 1945 with Europe in flames. Mm. That's what it was after. And that's what it got. That that was the aim, actually. That was the aim. You bet. That was the intent. Hitler was um, a a singular personality. Very creative, very assertive. Mm. and also very good at pattern recognition. It was part of his creativity. Okay, so now here's the... Oh, yes, he was a very creative person. No, I knew that, but pattern... Oh, yes, well, it's part of being creative is to okay. recognize okay. patterns, to pick them up unconsciously. Because that's what an artist does, is mm. pick up patterns unconsciously and then portray them, mm. right? And in an attempt to make them conscious. That, that's part of the artistic process. Okay, so now... He's brutalized, right? He went through trench warfare in World War One, and he's thwarted because he wanted to become an artist, and and he applied to become an artist. I think it was in, I don't, I think it was in Vienna. Yeah. It was. Uh, I think it was three times, and he was re- yeah. he was rejected all three times. Homeless. Oh, many of his friends had been killed in World War One. Was brutal, and there's no evidence that he was a coward in World War One. He got a medal for valor, you know. And if I remember correctly, there was one time in his life where he was in. A trench warfare scene with his friends and he wandered off away from them mm-hmm. and when he came back a mortar had landed in the middle of the group and killed everyone now that does something to you psychologically as well right because mm-hmm. it makes you feel special marked out because you didn't die but everyone else did mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so anyways so there's hitler and then he's surrounded by brutalized men and germany is completely demolished and 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 the economy is in shambles and the communists are threatening and it's like and then, and, and then, of course, there's hyperinflation, and, 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 and the Germans all feel betrayed, and it's like it's a mess, a mess the magnitude of which yeah. we can barely even imagine. Mm-hmm. 
And so then he starts talking to people because he's not very happy. And, and he's willing to go where the crowd leads him. That's the thing. Now, the funny thing is, is that a good leader has a dialogue with the crowd. But a good leader isn't willing to go wherever the crowd wants to go. Okay. It's a dialogue, okay. but not Hitler. It's not okay. a dialogue precisely. Or if it is, it's a dialogue with a darker side of him. Mm. So this is, this is what happens. So he stands in, in front of the crowd and he has some oratorical ability so he can captivate people. And because maybe he is one of those vessels through which the crowd can speak. So he says these sentences, nothing happens. Then he says these sentences, and he gets a bit of a rise out of the crowd. And then he says the same sentences, but he puts a flourish on them, and then it gets a real rise out of the crowd. And the little pattern recognition module in his mind thinks, okay, not so much of that, and quite a bit more of this. And so then he does that again, and he gets a little better at it, and so there's quite a bit more of the crowd-pleasing rhetoric, and the crowds get more enthusiastic. And he's watching and attending and shifting his behavior. Is that the pattern? Like he's making the pattern of the... Of the, the pattern crowd. is... Ma the pattern of the crowd's desire is okay. manifesting yeah. itself in his imagination. And he's yeah. giving voice to it. Yeah. The question is, well, what does the angry post-war German crowd want? Yeah. So you could think of Hitler as the yeah. em articulated embodiment of the maddened crowd. Yeah. Right? And then there's a dynamic, right? So the crowd... Yeah broadcasts its resentment to the leader and the leader says, oh, this is what you mean. And the crowd goes, yes, that's what we mean. Mm. And, and then they get more fired up and, and, and the leader listens and recognizes the pattern and says, so this is what you want. And the crowd goes, yes. And it's a feedback loop, right? And mm. he was very good at that. He was willing to use the gift of his voice in the service of the darkest desire of the maddened crowd. Well, it's like calling Satan himself up from the depths. That's a good enough metaphor, man. Unless someone can come up with a better one. Like, that's a good one. Do we have a Satan that has come up from the depth in our time right now? Or because I don't see... Not that. on that scale. No. Well, there's Maybe, King Jong-un. Uh, okay. You know. Yeah. He's quite the piece of work in his whole <laughs> dynasty. Well, you know, I think that's comparable. Look, I mean, the, the North Koreans have the third largest standing, I think it's the third largest standing army in the world. Mm -hmm. They are a major military force. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you think, oh, it's a comical little country. It's sort of tucked in the middle of nowhere. It's like, yeah, fair enough. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think they have seven million soldiers. You know, if, if North Korea decided to invade South Korea, the only way you would stop them was with nuclear weapons. Because they just yeah. invade, and that would be the end of it, you know. So. And some people would say, well, Donald Trump has these abilities as well to get the. Well, every 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 politician has that ability to some degree because they. But, but I mean that, that 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 his aim is actually to to make people uh, stand up against each other and make. Yeah. Create. Yeah. Well, it's hard to say what Donald Trump's I aim know, is. It's, you know, it's hard to say what his his yeah. aim is exactly. He's a he's a very contradictory and and complicated character. So, you know, and I mean, he's been in power for a year, and all hell hasn't broken loose. It's, it's a clash of of liberals against the, yeah, and it's getting worse with the day. It's like yeah, well, it's not so new. I don't know if it's any worse than it was in the '60s. Okay, it was pretty rough around Nixon's time. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. there was a big split, yeah. and, and, and that was pretty ugly. And it was pretty rough around Reagan okay. and Thatcher. But but I do feel that the liberals or the left in the West is, a, is actually trying to stand up against the, the Trump and, and Trump voters and the right and the conservatives and the alt-right and everyone that they exclude from, from, their, from their ideological views. So this is... Uh, something maybe not between uh, in, in between, but maybe inside of the left that is becoming more and more a problem. Well, there is. Like they they're, they're making more censorship laws. We have this in Germany as well. Oh and yeah, Holland yeah. And the, This is all coming from from the ma from the mm. mainstream, from the from the left. Radical left, from yeah. The radical left. The radical so, left has endless sins on its conscience. Well, you know, in so France maybe, now, it's illegal so, to put up a anti-abortion website. Yeah, it's yeah. illegal. Yeah. It's, it's illegal. just. Well, and Trudeau in Canada is, is 
proposing similar moves. Yeah. You know, it's like, well, I don't care what the hell you have to say about abortion, but there's a debate to be had about it. Yeah. You know, because it is obviously one of those mm. issues mm. that stands on the moral divide, and for obvious reasons. Mm. It's like, well, there's two competing principles at, at, it, at uh, war. Yeah, but it's, 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 it analyzes the message of don't have kids, because in Germany, for instance, we have these articles that are about, well, if you have uh, three of two babies instead of three, then you can reduce your re carbon footprint. Exactly. Oh, God. Yeah. I mean, can I do something else? I mean, to help, let me have my child. I mean, it's not like... Uh, no, it's appalling. I, that, I find those sorts of things absolutely appalling. They are so anti-human. Yeah. It's like, well, you could save the planet by not having a child. It's like, you could save the planet by jumping off a cliff. Yeah. Right. <laughs> So we'll let the child be born and you can just like perish and then you can reduce your goddamn carbon footprint. Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's, it's anti-humanism masquerading it's, it's, as planetary it's, it's, compassion. Exactly. It's in big ideas. It's in small things. This morning yeah. in my hotel room, I saw a, a little leaflet or uh, it said, um, do something good for the planet. Do something good for the world. It said, don't... Use your towel. Don't use your towel. Oh, don't, don't clean your room. So I thought of, about your book. Those like, things. Cle just... Clean your room first. Yeah. And I thought th th about... Those things really annoy me in hotels because yeah. that's a really good example yeah. of, of people manipulating yeah. um, morality. Like you see that in every hotel room mm -hmm. now. Well, if you... Uh, we're using, you know, 50,000 tons of detergent a year. Mm -hmm. And if you just... Don't wash your towels today. Yeah. It's like, yeah, well, you're not trying to save the goddamn planet. You're trying to save on Money, yeah. laundry. And fine, like if the you want to put a sign that says, look, that man. Everyone understands. Yeah, well, you want to yeah. reuse your towels? It would, it, 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 would that be okay? It would help us on our cost end? I'd be way more likely to do that than to have this damn message about saving the planet. Maybe let you respond to this. How... What part of the mess that we are in right now can we contribute to collective guilt? Like the feeling of that we have, we talked about the Germans a little bit, they have the guilt for the, for the war, for the, for the victims of the war, for what happened to the Jews. But it seems like... So original, has, original sin was an attempt to kind of deal with that. It's yeah. like, you might say, you could say, I think, but, psychologically, but, that um, people feel guilty. Yeah. It's just how it is. People because feel, I feel guilty. That, that is for often the motivation to do something good. Yeah. It's because we have this built in guilt. Yeah, it's existential guilt. Existential guilt. Where does it come from? Because it could be the death of God. That's a good that's a very good question. Well, I think I think part of part of the reason that you have existential guilt is because you're not all you could be and neither is everything else. Mm. You know, so when you look out in the world you see or inward for that matter, you see a set of unsolved problems that could be addressed if you just were a little bit better than you are. Okay. And so... Well, that seems a little bit narcissistic, like you are responsible to solve all this problem, these problems um, by yourself. I mean, it's... Well, the by yourself part is a problem. You're, yeah. it, that, that, because if you start thinking that way, then it, it yes. becomes crushing and it yeah. can become narcissistic mm -hmm. in the negative sort of manner, right? Yeah. But... You, you're responsible for solving these problems, but not necessarily by yourself. No, no. And that, that's a really good thing to know. It's like you should take on the burden, but other people... It's okay if other people yeah, help, man. By yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's very important. So, I mean, the Catholics, the Catholic doctrine at least gave a locale to that guilt. You know, it said, oh, well, people are universally guilty because our ancestors, you know, our fundamental ancestors did something wrong and we've never recovered from it. It's really, an, really, it's a brilliant formulation, I think, because that is actually what happened, is our ancestors woke up and became aware of the future, okay. and we've never recovered from it. No. So, and, that, and, and that is what distinguishes us from animals. So there was, there was a core element to the idea of original sin that was just psychologically dead on. Mm. Well, and then the question was, okay, well, what's the antidote to original sin? That's the fundamental question mm. in the Bible, mm. essentially, is, okay, well, you know, there's the fall of man. Mm. What do we do about it? And the answer is something like voluntarily bear the weight of tragic being and tell the truth. Mm -hmm. That's your best bet. And that answer is satisfying to me. Mm -hmm. I, think it's, I think it's true enough. Mm -hmm. You know, it's true enough to implement. Mm -hmm. But more than that, one of the things that's so interesting, and, and this has especially been the case 
now that so many people are coming to talk to me about their experiences, like tens of thousands of people, literally, because they all say the same thing. I don't get letters from people saying, well, you know, I started cleaning up my room and telling the truth and my life has fallen apart and everything's in absolute chaos and I wish you'd go to hell, you son of a bitch. For That never happens, you know. Well, it's strange because it could. What happens instead is people write and they say, well, you know, I started trying to be more careful with what I was saying and to say what I think and I've been trying to sort myself out and clean up my room and things are so much better that I can't believe it. And then they write me and tell me that. It's like... So it's not like this is just some casual theory. And if you're a psychotherapist, well, psychotherapy, the process of psychotherapy is predicated on the idea that shared conversational truth is redemptive. It's, so it's, it's, a, it's very funny because clinical psychology is an unbelievably Christian, what would you call it? It's, it's an unbelievably Christian practice. Because it's predicated on the idea that shared, well, as I said, shared spoken truth is redemptive. So, I mean, you see this really obviously with people like Carl Rogers, who was a great clinician. I mean, he was a missionary to begin with. And he, he, he became a secular humanist, but he didn't drop any of his fundamental, the fundamental Christian presuppositions that the spoken the truthful spoken word was redemptive. It's built so deeply into psychotherapy that there's just no getting out of it. And the other part of psychotherapy is face what you're afraid of and disgusted by. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those two things. I mean, those are those are the core elements of the hero mythology, essentially. And it works. It works. It's it's not just. But those are all things that are not built into our society, which which is about having fun, about being successful, about being busy, especially. Yeah. Uh, facing things, I mean, it's... It, I, well, that's why, right. Why should I do that? I can, well, watch, right. I can watch Netflix. Why should I, I do that? Fine. Well, that's right. That is yeah. the, but that is the right question. Yeah. Why should I do that? Well, yeah. the answer is, the flood is coming and your art better be prepared. And I feel that people do wake up now. They want to be, become more politically active or they want to read more and don't they turn off the TV, but they still don't know really what to do. Mm -hmm. what, what can I do? Mm -hmm. They tell me, I write articles. They tell me, oh, I, I, I like to read your articles, but what can I, what can I do? What should I do? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> so it's, there's, a, there's, there's a, a gap now between realizing that they have to become more active and the things that, that their options. And, well, and we could point. say more responsible. Yeah. And you could say that maybe the drive towards activism is a warped attempt to do yeah. that. That's what yeah. it looks like to me. Because young people are falling into that trap. They mm -hmm. want to become activists. Uh, at the, 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 well, they the, want to do something. They want to do something good right. with their life. Yes. You know, I mean, some of it's driven by resentment, as yeah. we've already pointed out. But some of it is driven by the but desire what, to do something. So, what 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 water can we lead them to? Like, what 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 are the other? I say we because I, I feel like I I don't know. I, I do feel like a we, like a country. We, we need to do this together. So what can we do for mm. these young people? Yeah, well, that's what the 12 Rules for Life is about. Yeah, right? so give them the like, book, basically. Well, that's, you know, that's, yeah. that's, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a treatise on why you should do something better than amuse yourself with Netflix. I don't have anything against Netflix or against stories, for that matter. That's not the issue. It's that... But the real question is, the real question is, why bother? In the face of tragedy and evil, why bother? That's the question. It's like, yeah, good question, man. That's a good question. It's like, well, because you can overcome it. You can minimize it. You can restrict it. You can bring great things into being. You can bring beautiful things into being, right? You can, you can be a... I had another guy come up to me the other day. This was a good one, because one of the pieces of... One of the suggestions that I've made to people is that, for, for men in, in particular, although it's not limited to men, is that you should try to be the person who's reliable at your father's funeral. Yes. And he said, well, you know, last year my father died and I didn't know what the hell to do, so I decided that I'd try to be the one that everyone could rely on during the funeral. He said, that worked like a charm. He said, people could rely on me and I knew what to do. And I you thought, Jesus, <laughs> great, man. Like, that's a tough situation. But at least you have a task. You don't just right. have to grieve. You got a task. Yeah, that's right, man. It's better than grief. It is. Grief is just 
Or at least it's an antidote to the grief. Yeah. It's like you got the grief still, yeah. but you got something to yeah. do. You yeah. can comfort some other people. It's something when there's nothing. Because at a funeral is when there's nothing. There's nothing to say, right? Mm. You hit no. the limit. No. So what do you do? Well, you try to be the person who's there to make it not quite as bad as it has to be. Yeah, great. That's so, such great advice. So where, where is this path taking you the next few years, you think? What, what, what are your plans? Oh, well, the, you know, what are my plans? I don't really have any plans for the next no. few years. Well, it's, it's too it's unpredictable. Just, I think it's walking away with you a little bit at this point. Not a little bit. Yeah. It's like, you know, I've, I've watched well, these videos. Put emotion, you've put something in motion. It's yes. Just, it's just rolling That's out right. like this. That's right. Well, That's and amazing. so I'm, I'm surfing a 500-foot wave. Really? Yeah. And hopefully... Yeah. Well, I watched these videos, and I wrote yeah. about it a little bit, 12 yeah. Rules for Life. Watch these kids, the parkour kids, oh, yeah. who, and the, and the yeah. sky crane climbers, and the crazy stunt people, and the people who surf 100 foot waves you know i watch those videos and i see people dealing with these mm -hmm. dynamic ch situations that are mm -hmm. you know where catastrophe can break loose at any moment it's like well that's what i'm doing I'm so it's like surfing away so it's also very because you have said at one point i'm i'm really conscious of what i say and sometimes i'm afraid that i might say something no not sometimes all the time yes yes, yes definitely oh yeah. absolutely but i'm so curious what what well, look was, at what happened what with was, channel four yes jesus there's two million people have watched that it's like that yeah, was that amazing. was a great place that was a shark tank i just had to say one stupid thing but that had like the lindy shepherd sort of revelation yeah. behind it I think that people really saw clearly what was going on there yeah like yeah the, well, total, great. the reason on the left and the the idea, idea feminist ideology on the right like coming together like black and white yes yeah. that was the, the case like within Lindy Shepard but what would that of course you won't say literally but what would that be something that you would say that would perhaps just Oh, it could be make any it number of things. Like I could make a careless joke. Okay. You know, I mean... Is it that little? Or is it, it could be. Yeah. Or, or I could respond improperly to someone on Twitter and get in a little war. Or, I mean, I'm a little more protected yeah. than I was a year ago because, okay. because more there's eyes, a lot more of positive eyes. momentum yeah. behind me. So maybe yeah. maybe yeah. it would be... Maybe I would be forgiven an error or two, but mm. I wouldn't count on it. You know, and I've already many times already in the last year... If I've said anything that, well, I can give you an example. So about three months ago, my neighborhood was blanketed by these posters. Ah, I brought it. Yeah, yeah. And it's the poster is quite the thing because, yeah. you know, the person, yeah, that's the one. That's the one. Community safety. It's, an un, yeah. it's a work of art, this thing. Because this is so different than from the online harassment that you have received. Oh, yeah. Well, this is, because this, this, is, is, this is real. You can feel it. You can, it's mm -hmm. on the tree, you know. It's, mm -hmm. it's a work I of malicious I, brilliance. Exactly. Um, about a block away from where I live, there's a big oh. rock in a park. Yeah. And the person who had postered these, I know who it is, mm -hmm. because the oh. person's relative wrote me and told me who was doing it. Right. So... There's a big rock out in our park, and they completely covered it. They com covered totally like the, the telephone poles and yeah. all sorts of places in my neighborhood. Yeah. And so, first of all, there's a hotline to my employer, so that's cool. And then the next thing is community safety bulletin, so that's sort of a sexual predator thing. And then, then there's an immediate accusation that I've been campaigning against the human rights of women, people of color, Muslims, and LGBT people. I have open associations with neo-Nazis and that I've been referred to as a Nazi philosopher by the leader of the new constitution, which they spelt wrong, by the way, Constitution Party of Canada. It's like a party no one's ever heard of and God only knows what that means, but it doesn't matter. It's really, it's a work yeah, of art, but even more intelligently. Well, this is such a funny picture because this is a picture taken from the free speech yeah, rally. You had no microphone. And I had no microphone, so I was like raising my voice so that I could be heard over the white noise. Not only did I have no microphone, but they were broadcasting white noise. So they t took this picture that makes me look like, you know, a carnivorous, um, so, you know, carnivorous yeah. white male, basically. And For the listeners, because they were, you were talking here about the, the importance of free, free speech. speech yeah. 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 And so it's just, so then what happened was um, the person who had produced these posters put it up on their Facebook site. Mm. And so I tweeted the Facebook site. And then mm. I also tweeted the same day the Facebook site of a 
so the same person had organized and had organized their followers well enough to shut down a free speech mm -hmm. panel that was going to be held at Ryerson University. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards they came out and celebrated in the streets, but they came out under the banner of the hammer and sickle, which I regard as a move no less unacceptable, let's say, than coming out under the banner of the swastika, although people often don't see it that way. I see it that way. Mm -hmm. And so I tweeted the fact that this person had a Facebook page and that they were perversely enough also a business student at a local college, which I thought was really comical. It's like, really, you're a hammer and sickle bearing communist in a business program. It's like, how clueless can you get? So I tweeted these two things, the Facebook pages, and since then I've been accused of doxing my students. So that's how that oh, got yeah. spun. A, they weren't my students. B, I didn't dox them. And well, as far as I was concerned, it was like, well, it, what I was doing was providing public information about the nature of the people who were up to these shenanigans. Yeah, and, and you do this often on, on, online, you, you, you fight back. You, if someone attacks you online, you, you should pick your, or choose your battles and, and, yeah. and, and but... Choose them carefully. But, but do battle it. So. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's the thing is, like, what are the rules? Don't make unnecessary enemies. Choose your battles judiciously. Don't hit back any harder than you have to. That's a tough one, eh? You win the conversation when you both come away from the conversation smarter than you were when you went into the conversation. That's how you win.